Welcome, my name is Joel uh, with the Looker team here at Google Cloud. And today I'm going to discuss with you managing Looker at scale with system activity analytics. I'm going to start by explaining system activity analytics a little bit for those of you who might not be familiar. And then I'm going to talk about three common administrative tasks you might encounter as a Looker administrator. And I'll talk about how system activity analytics and some other features inside Looker can help you perform those tasks. Specifically, we're going to focus on users, how to manage users in groups, and how to drive adoption. We're going to talk about performance, how to manage performance, and how to track resource consumption using Looker. And then we'll talk a little bit about content, that is, uh, reports, dashboards, and explorers, and how to make more impactful ones, and how to track any errors that might exist in, in that content. Every time someone logs into Looker or runs a query, or a scheduled query runs, or content like a dashboard or explorer is accessed, Looker logs that information. We automatically model it, and we present it to the Looker administrator via System Activity Analytics. System Activity Analytics provides you with five pre-built dashboards and a set of explorers, so you can really drill into the data of how Looker is being used and the performance of Looker in your specific instance. System activity comes in essentially two flavors. Um, everyone has access to these explorers and to these dashboards. But if you require longer data retention periods or you're really spending a lot of time in system activity analytics and you need greater performance, we offer elite system activity, which is just a, a slightly higher performing longer data retention version. If you're interested in elite system activity analytics, um, simply reach out to your Looker customer success manager or sales team, and they'd be happy to help you understand how to get it if you don't already have it. One common task in Looker, particularly if you're an administrator with a lot of users or a lot of groups you're trying to administer, is to uh, deal with and control and manage the groups and permissions available to Looker users. Now, this isn't strictly system activity, but Looker has enhanced its group management interface so that it's become easier to manage large numbers of groups or to manage users at scale inside Looker. If you haven't gone through and looked at that new group management interface, we definitely recommend you do. It'll make uh, administration of lots of groups just that much easier. Now, in addition to that, Looker now provides the ability to mirror existing SAML groups inside Looker. So if your organization already has defined groups, defined permissions, you can mirror those inside Looker and save yourself a lot of trouble in trying to um, add users to groups inside Looker when they've already been added outside. With the addition of the ability to mirror SAML groups, users can also belong to both a native Looker defined group and one of these SAML mirrored groups at the same time. So you have a great deal of flexibility in how you deal with users, how you provide them with permissions, and how you manage them uh, again, this is really useful at scale, particularly for larger companies or ones with larger Looker user bases. Um, the ability to mirror groups and the ability to manage groups seamlessly is really important. But there's a, a vital and important question that we all have to ask as Looker administrators about our user base. And that is, how do we drive adoption of data, adoption of Looker as a tool? Who's really using it? Who isn't really using it? And for that, system activity analytics really is key. So you can go into system activity analytics into the user activity dashboard, and that will immediately give you an idea of who your most prolific users of Looker are, what they're doing, and what your least prolific users of Looker are and what they're doing. And you can drill into that data just like any data set in Looker and find out really specifics about what's going on. We find this important in, the, in managing a user base because one key part of driving adoption and a, a data-driven organization is building ambassadors, finding people who are able to go out into departments, out into groups around the organization, and bring to them the, the knowledge of data 
and the use of data so that uh, they begin using it as part of their day-to-day -day jobs. So using system activity analytics can tell you which users really are the ones that have figured out how to use Looker, who have figured out how to incorporate data into their day-to-day -day tasks, and you can recruit them. It's a great tool for finding out who they are. Similarly, um, system activity analytics will let you find which users have logged in once to the system and not come back, or have never logged into that system. And you can direct an ambassador you have, or you can email directly those users and encourage them to come back into the tool, encourage them to come back into the system, uh, pull them about why they're not using the tool. Um, a lot of uh, really rich information about how data is being used in the organization can be found just by going into that user activity dashboard. Another common use case for system activity analytics is monitoring instance and query performance inside Looker. Uh, if you go to system activity to the database performance dashboard, you'll be able to very quickly see at the top of that dashboard some indicators of query runtimes and query performance overall. This is a great leading indicator. If you find that you might be seeing some performance concerns, um, it'll show you right here when those query runtimes start getting longer and longer. An important thing to do if you're monitoring this is to realize that you may be able to catch performance concerns before they're even observed by your users. So you can do some interesting remediation of uh, adjusting when queries are run or, or how they're run in order to make it a little bit more efficient and make sure that those query runtimes are fast. Query runtime, of course, being the way that, uh, that slow performance exhibits itself to your users. So um, this is really that, that top line metric that makes that big difference. But you can also go into the instance performance dashboard to start remediating, remediating some of those problems. The instance performance dashboard has a very interesting tile on it around uh, scheduled queries and a heat map as to when those queries are scheduled to run. What we find, just looking at our internal users and looking at some of the users in our larger customers, is that scheduled queries tend to group around certain times of day. Maybe uh, those who are scheduling queries will schedule them for right after work, or right in the morning when they come in, or um, some that might be thinking that there's more performance, schedule them all at midnight. And so you find these times of day where there's a lot of query activity, and that can constrain resource um, throughout the, that time period because of all the scheduled queries that are running. One thing I did do when I was looking at uh, an instance that we're running at Looker is I found a, a query that was scheduled to be run every five minutes, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And um, that was uh, something where I could drill into this data using this dashboard, find the person who's running that query, speak to them about the necessity of having it run every five minutes, and we ended up doing is spacing it out to four times a day and just overall reducing load on the system. So it's a really powerful and useful tool to go in and see the heat map of when queries are running. You can adjust what's going on, just move them around during the day, have them run at different times of day, uh, make sure that uh, you've got a nice smooth flow and excellent performance going forward. And any discussion of performance and resource consumption, even though we're, being, uh, we're going through this pretty quickly, it would, it would be a mistake not to mention Looker blocks for cloud resource consumption. So if you're uh, in the Google Cloud or you're in Snowflake or you're in AWS, We've pre-modeled the, the cloud consumption data for you with Looker blocks. So you can right away, if you've got that data in your database, go in and explore it in conjunction with the user activity data and find uh, cost analysis, consumption analysis right inside Looker. So you can combine a lot of what you're doing with system activity from an administrative perspective with an understanding of how you're consuming cloud resources and make sure that those two things are in sync from an administrative perspective. The last use of system activity analytics I'll be discussing today is the management and improvement of content. That is dashboards and explorers inside Looker. And system activity analytics can give you some great insights into that as well. The content activity dashboard provides you with a great look into what is the most popular content and the least popular content that you've supplied to your user base. We use this inside Looker, and we have customers that are using this to identify that content which is absolutely the most popular and to emulate it when we build the next set of content or the next explorer, the next dashboard. If we're building dashboards with real impact, 
and we can see that people are relying on them and using them, we can use that as a model for future dashboards as we go. Uh, simultaneously with that, we can find that there are some dashboards which are not used, or some explorers which are simply not used. And it's a best practice to go in, if you're building those for a use case, to find out why they're not being used. It might be that users don't like it, you've got the wrong metrics there, they're not well designed. Um, it might be that used in conjunction with performance data, maybe users are abandoning it because the performance is not great on those dashboards. So you might do some remediation we talked about in the previous section. Um, and it is really a great practice to prune unused content. There's a link right in the content activity dashboard to the unused contents and explores page. You should go in there regularity and get rid of stuff that people are not using actively or that you have no intention to use. It'll just simplify your administrative life later on when, um, when you just have grown the amount of content that you're supplying to users. So use this content activity dashboard to uh, identify great content, to find content that's not working so well, and, and determine how to build more, better content that's gonna appeal to users. We also have a dashboard in system activity analytics around errors and broken content. So this lets you see where queries fail, where dashboards fail, where explorers fail, where something's wrong, and trace it right to the root cause of that failure. So you may find that people aren't using content, that it's broken, that it's got low performance, and this will help you go in and fix those problems quickly with minimal fuss, often before your users might find that there's a problem there. Um, they might still be using a dashboard where a tile's broken, for example. This will tell you why that tile's broken. You can fix it before they abandon that dashboard. So to keep people engaged, to, to drive adoption, to, to keep data as core to their business, great content is really key, and using system activity analytics both in the content consumption and in errors and broken dashboards type of a scenario can really help you do that. So that's a quick overview of system activity analytics. I want to leave you with a few additional resources so that you can dig into this more if you're not already using this really powerful resource as you run your Looker instance. We do have a blog overview of system activity analytics. There's some great details in our documentation around it as well. Um, and you can use our community to discuss it with other administrators at the same time. And if you're interested in elite system activity analytics, please feel free to reach out to your Looker representative. They'd be more than happy to talk system activity analytics with you and help you get the most out of system activity analytics as you go about administering your instance. So with that, thank you very much. I appreciate you listening. And we look forward to uh, working with you around system activity going forward. Thank you.